Welcome to the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, where we talk all things Freemasons while drinking an old fashioned. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. Platforms other than YouTube tend to block some of our content. Subscribe now to get up to date videos and shorts as they release. Now, enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, where we talk all things Freemasons while drinking an old fashioned. I'm Brian. And I'm Russ. Russ, today, we pride ourselves in not being super controversial. Right. But I'm going to talk, we are going to talk about a topic that shouldn't be controversial in masonry, but it is. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this one's a little on the, the edge of controversy, I would say. I'm going to speak for myself. Yeah. I am embarrassed for masonry that this is even something that has made mainstream media news. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is, to me, it is absolutely awful. So let's set the stage. Well, let me ask this. We're going to ask this question first before we set the stage. At any time, should your legal vocation that's performing legal services or goods or whatever... Should that uh, should that legal profession ever get you kicked out of masonry if it's legal? I mean, there's well, probably some exceptions. Put them in the comments. They, yeah, um, come up with the comments. But normally, no, you wouldn't think so. Be- we want to be careful about our obligation. But part of our obligation is nothing should interfere with. Yeah. Right? So let's tell you a story that you may not know. So, at the time, a 41-year-old Master Mason, a father of three, um, a minister, a husband, a husband, was expelled by the Grand Lodge of Tennessee. Tennessee, talking to you guys, was expelled. And let me tell you what he was expelled for, and we'll talk about the story. He, the trial commission found him guilty of, quote, promoting homosexuality. Promoting homosexuality. So, essentially, this is what, what this, this former brother Mason did. Um, he, uh, he posts on Facebook and does whatever and says, hey, you know, hey, if somebody wants to get married, I'm not getting in the ca- caught up in the rest of this. I'm here to to, to, to marry if you need to, right? Yes. He, so he, he posts that out. Well, he ends up performing a wedding of a same-sex marriage, okay? For, forget what your beliefs are, okay, because I'm about to change your mind, okay? Forget what your beliefs are here. So he is a minister and officiated a wedding of a same-sex couple. Fast forward, he was expelled for promoting homosexuality because that is, that is, I don't know if it still is, right? Because this happened in 2020. Um, But the Grand Lodge of Tennessee's code, section 4.2105, specifically states that it's a Masonic offense to, quote, Engage in lewd conduct, to promote or engage in homosexuality, to cohabitate immorally in a situation without the benefit of marriage. We're going to expose you we, here too. We please. need to talk about that. So, obviously, he's not being charged for engaging, but promoting. So let let's talk about this before we go to this statement: to cohabitate immorally in a situation without the benefit of marriage. Tennessee, hypocrisy is coming. So he officiated and was kicked out. So that was his job, and he was kicked out. So some of you say, well, you know, he didn't have to do that. Let's go this direction. Several of our followers are in law enforcement. Uh, uh, One of my children and her husband are in that world as well. A lot of law enforcement, they work what they call part-time jobs. And a lot of them, it's security. It's, you know, at a, at a convenience store, at a marketplace. A lot of the times they're at weddings and you'll, they'll, if they're especially in a downtown venue. Yeah. So 
let's say we have a brother that's a police officer and job comes up hey we got uh we've got the johnson and and smith wedding uh we need some security yeah i'll take it sure it's 50 bucks an hour i'll go do it he goes in a and security at this wedding could he not be charged with promoting homosexuality because he was security at the wedding let me give you another one we have a brother in our lodge that owns a catering company so he johnson and smith wedding hey we'd like for you to uh, cater some of your barbecue at our wedding that sounds great Goes out there, puts some wings and some ribs, maybe an extra rib, at, at the uh, at the wedding or at the at the reception. Is he promoting homosexuality? I hope that the brothers in Tennessee have put a bylaw change in, and this thing is gone, because based on everything we've read, this is not the masonry that I am no. proud of. No, right. Think that through. So let's push that to the side. Let's say you've got this staunch opinion on, well, anything gay or homosexual, I'm out. Okay, so push that to the side. Let me read the words to you again. Yeah, this the there's a part of this bylaw that just right. I find fascinating. So it started off to engage in lewd conduct, and then period goes to to promote or engage in homosexuality, period. Still in quotes, to cohabitate immorally in a situation without the benefit of marriage. So therefore, and what, in the United States, 50% of all marriages end in divorce? You can't tell me that in all the years of Tennessee Grand Lodge that you haven't had a Grand Lodge officer shacking up with a girlfriend at Grand Lodge. Is that not? Have they, have they kicked out all of those guys too? So... Anybody that lives in, with their girlfriend? What, what about yeah, yeah cohabitate immorally. immorally? So when we were younger, my parents used to, if you live with somebody, they called it shacking up, shacking right? Up. Shacking up. And I still call it shacking up. Yeah. But I'll just say before my before my daughter got married, she lived with with, with her husband. Okay. Fair now enough. have your opinions, if you will. I'll share our story. But sometimes you don't find out who the real... I, I lived with my wife before I got married. So technically, could I have been expelled? That, th to me, they picked and choose. They got to pick and choose out of this. It's, it's, it's a damn shame to me. Yeah, this was a brother that was very active. His friend group was in Freemasonry. He was inclusive in his group. He he f was a true Mason. And all of a sudden, because he did something, because he was a pastor, um, it's a it's a very much a political thing. I and it's not what the Brotherhood of Freemasonry is about. Right. It is about inclusion of accepting each other, different religions, different uh, and now, which makes us all kind of better people, is, right? So, go into the uh, uh, description section. We'll put a uh, a link to the article. But there's something in this article that bothered me. He said all of my friends were Masons, and then after I got expelled, they just they were gone. I couldn't hang out with them anymore. Yeah. So, let me just tell you this: If I was a Tennessee Mason, and my friend got expelled for this scenario, you better believe that at the next Grand Lodge session, I'm putting a bylaw proposal together and I'm going to push and push until we fix this archaic, archaic ruling. And isn't that, I, yeah, make sure we can do what we want, but it's legal. In the state, I mean, so what? I mean, what? I mean, it's like we're we're contradicting the law. I mean, I, yeah, I, I I can't wrap my head around this. As Masons, we're supposed to be better than this. Tennessee, please, the brothers that listen, I, I know there's Tennessee, but please tell me that somebody has put a bylaw proposal up, and that at least it's been kicked out. But uh, in this article, it talks about uh, the Grand Lodge of Georgia had a similar ban. 
as part of their official code. Um, and uh, do they have it Jim was, Crow laws still on the books? Right, right. Let's uh, get to that. Uh, yeah, it's this is just crazy. Um, and you might think that we are too libtards just chatting. Yeah, we're not. We are. We're from Kansas. <laughs> We're pretty conservative. Yeah, and, and again, it's not just, about what you believe, yeah, right? Exactly. Obviously, it's you know, about, we're 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 straight men with kids, and and this is not, it's not promoting. And, and again, it's not like he's standing out with a with a uh, with a big sign and promoting. Yeah. It. But and who cares if he is? It's too bad. It's too bad. So Masons, think about this. Uh, Tennessee Masons, fix this. This is crazy, and anybody else is looking. Uh, we went and looked at. I looked at our Kansas uh, bylaws today. No, nothing that dumb is in there. Go look at your bylaws. You might be surprised what's in there. And you, as a member, and you might look at some of your civic laws in your towns. Make sure they don't have silly things. Well, I, in there. Where I grew up, we we grew up in very small farming communities. There's still a terrible law on the book where I grew up that we won't discuss. But uh, if I was still in that town and on some sort of a council, that that law would be clean up. We yeah. clean up Kansas. We're doing uh, bylaws right now. We're cleaning up a lot of things. Yeah, more clerical and and yeah. just things than this. But, but you are your, your grand lodge. F fix yeah, it. Fix you have you have a voice. So. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Old Fashioned hey. Sonic Podcast. Thanks. Cheers. What did you think of this episode? To continue to promote Freemasonry, hit that like button now. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and give us a comment. The Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, where real Masons talk Freemasonry. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and give us a comment.